Good morning, I am Lian Wan, justice reporter of Trappler, and we're recording here from Baguio where the Supreme Court holds its yearly on-bank summer session. Today, this morning, the justices will hold its on-bank session, which they usually do every Tuesday. But because yesterday was a holiday, they're going to hold it on a Wednesday this week. In front of me right now are supporters of former Senator Bongbong Marcos. They're holding a silent picket here in front of the Supreme Court in Baguio City. And let me just read some of their signs. It says, we believe in our justice system. Please help us, SC. And they're saying that 1,000 days is too long, so konting tulong naman daw SC. 1,000 days refer to the period it has taken for the Presidential Electoral Tribunal of conducting the initial review of ballots from three pilot provinces. Marcos supporters have been almost a fixture in front of the Supreme Court in Padre Faura. And they usually are very lively and energetic. And they chant, they sing, they dance. But for today, it's kind of silent. But let's try to listen in to what they have to say, if any. Three years is uh, too much. Ang haba na siguro yun na paghintay. Kaya, Apo Bersamin, maawa naman kayo. Uh, bigyan ninyo ng desisyon, yung nakapile na protest ng ating Vice Presidente, Bongbong Marcos. That was Frank Esquilon from the group Marcos Perin. And as you heard, they're calling out to their Apo Bersamin, referring to Chief Justice Lucas Bersamin, who is the first Chief Justice from the Cordillera. Bersamin is from Abra. So they're saying, ang one sign here reads, Apo Bersamin ang bahala sa amin. But as we already know, Bersamin is not the member in charge of the electoral protest filed by Marcos. It is actually Associate Justice Ben Kagiwa, who Marcos wanted to inhibit citing biases towards Liberal Party. But in a strongly worded resolution by the Supreme Court on Bank, they rejected the motion for inhibition of Marcos and stood firm that Justice Kagiwa will remain to be the member in charge of this high-stakes electoral protest filed by Marcos against Vice President Lenny Robredo. So this is usually what happens during on-bank. Reporters usually just wait for an announcement that will come from the that will come from the public information office and usually they give advisory around lunchtime to say if there's going to be a presser after lunchtime. But uh, sometimes we get um, tips or information from sources which we're be able to break ahead of time. So right now we're waiting if such information will be tipped to us to, do, uh, to find out if there's going to be any important story from this week's Unbank. Yesterday, or rather last week, the important story from the Unbank was the Supreme Court compelling the government to publicly release tens of thousands of documents related to the war on drugs despite earnest resistance from the Office of Solicitor General tarnishing the Duterte administration's winning record in the Supreme Court. It's almost 1 p.m., but there's no word yet from the Public Information Office of any press conference. But we have learned from a source earlier that the Anbank has ordered the government to answer the petition of opposition lawmakers seeking to stop the Chico River loan, which is funded by China. It's, uh, it's a controversial loan agreement with China by the Duterte administration, and we have learned that the Supreme Court Unbank wants the government to answer that petition and this is usually how to cover the unmax session we get a tip or an information that it's not necessarily officially announced yet but we're expecting the PIO to announce it officially later today. So in front of me now is the chief of the public information office of the Supreme Court attorney Brian Kitasaka and it turned out mera naman palang press conference so we're expecting that he will make official the move of the Unbank to make the government answer the petition to stop the Chico River loan. So let's listen to him. The Supreme Court ordered the respondents to file their comments to the petition within a period of 10 days. So yun, official na. But what does it mean? Does it mean that the Supreme Court saw merits in that petition? It's not really automatic. Because unless we see the full resolution of the court, which will not be available today, kasi literal kakaboto lang nila sa unbank, usually pag ganyan, 
in my experience of covering the Supreme Court, kapag pinapakomment nilang isang party, they usually say without giving due course. But again, we cannot be sure because we can't see the full resolution. But maybe you could also see it from the point na at least hindi nila dismiss outright. Lalo na kamakailan lang naglabas ng desisyon ng Supreme Court na sinasabi nila na because so many petitions are filed in our docket. Mula ngayon kapag wala kang legal standing or you violated the hierarchy of courts or it's not really of transcendental importance, hindi na namin papansinin yung, ano mo, yung, yung petition mo. So, pwede mo rin sigurong tignan na, oh, baka pwede nga nilang dismiss outright yung mahabayan petition pero hindi nila pinadismiss. So, those are the considerations. Actually, para sa akin, isa ring angulo ay yung, there's no TRO. Mahabayan requested for an urgent TRO and because there's none, edi effectively, nothing is stopping the Duterte government from proceeding with a controversial Chico River Loan Agreement with China. Although si President Rodrigo Duterte na rin naman yung nagsabi na ipapareview daw muna niya. And when we thought that that was gonna be our only story from the Unbank today, Attorney Hosaka announced that there are two equally important decisions for today. One of them is very close to home, right here in Baguio. It involves the cutting of trees of SM Baguio. Let's listen to Attorney Hosaka. It involves a, uh, a temporary restraining order which was issued by the Supreme Court way back in March 24, 2015, which prohibited the cutting and balling of trees at Luneta Hill in Baguio City, where the SM Mall is currently expanding. Okay, to backtrack lang, Yung mga nakakaakit na sa Baguio, you know, you can see that SM Baguio has expanded. They now have a sky ranch. There's a Ferris wheel. There's bump car. And all of that was made possible because they cut trees. And in 2015, in the continuing expansion of SM Baguio, sabi ng Korte Suprema, nag-issue sila ng temporary restraining order prohibiting SM Baguio from cutting more trees. And today, the decision is to make permanent the TRO. Pero may caveat. Let's listen again to Attorney Hosaka. The permanent status of the temporary restraining order is without prejudice to the filing of an application for an environmental certificate, compliance certificate in accordance with existing laws and regulations. It just means that SM Baguio now has the option to secure an environmental compliance certificate. And if they can secure that, then maybe they can proceed. So fight is not yet over for the environmentalists. And it's just making me sentimental because in 2012, nung wala pang pinuputol na puno, well, not really wala pang pinuputol na puno, but when all of the wave of protests started, kasi gusto magtayo ng parking lot ng SM Baguio, I was a young producer then for a television network, and this is one of my first story, if not the first. Hindi ko na tandaan. If not the first, so wala, hindi pa pinuputol yung mga puno nun. But eventually, they were cut. So it's just making me sentimental now to go from there and to be able to be here in Baguio today and be the one to report this important step towards protecting those trees. I feel like it's just come full circle. But moving on from sentimentality, ang isa pang the third item on the agenda of the PIO is an equally important decision that concerns the profit share of local government units. It's now known as the Mandanas decision, and let's listen to Attorney Hasaka. The Supreme Court ruled that the basis of the internal revenue allotment for local governments is based on all national taxes. The Supreme Court said that the adjusted amounts of the internal revenue allotments for the of the LGUs is deemed effective only after the finality of the judgment or of the ruling of the court. Hence, the adjustment amounts will be given to the local government units starting with the 2022 budget cycle. Okay, backtrack ulit. This petition is six years old. It was pending at the Supreme Court for six years. It was filed by then-representative, now Batangas Governor, Hermilando Mandanas. Yung alam nating ira, which is internal revenue allotment, under the local government code, nakalagay na the LGU should get 40% of national profit. Pero since time immemorial, ang interpretation ng gobyerno ay you get 40% from internal revenue taxes, not 
all national taxes. So Mandanas goes to the Supreme Court and says, no, LGU should be entitled to 40% of all national taxes, just not internal revenue taxes. So in July 2018, the Supreme Court granted the petition of Governor Mandanas and said, Yes. So now, we're reinterpreting the law and we're saying that IRA should be 40% of all national taxes and not just national internal revenue taxes. So that would include customs taxes, tariffs, and it's gonna make a huge difference. Like for example, in the 2018 national budget, ang IRA ng LGUs ay 522.7 billion pesos. Ayon sa computation ni Senator Ralph Recto, who's always also been pushing for the expansion of IRA, kung isinama daw ang customs duties, ang IRA sana noong 2018 would have been 644 billion. Malaking pera yun for the LGUs. So the decision today is just to affirm the ruling. Kasi syempre nag-appeal yung gobyerno, nag-appeal din yung mga petitioner, at denied sila pareho. But the more important, I feel like that the angle for this story is that sinabi ng Korte Suprema na, 2022 pa pwedeng makatanggap ang mga LGU ng bigger share of IRA because daw, there's a three-year cycle. So, kailangan pa nilang i-compute and i-take into account the transition. So, 2022 pa. Ngayon, ano yung isa pang nadenay? So, dinenay yung gobyerno kasi obviously ayaw ng gobyerno. Pero nadenay din yung ibang petitioner kasi ang gusto nila maging retroactive. Ibig sabihin, ibalik nyo. So parang kung kung ang tamang pagbasa pala ng batas ay mas malaki yung share ng LGU, ibalik nyo all the money that you did not give us before. Pero hindi yun kinatigan ng Supreme Court. Ang sabi nila, no, it's not gonna be a retroactive decision because we're applying the operative fact doctrine. Ngayon, ano yung operative fact doctrine? Medyo nosebleed siya. Operative fact doctrine, ayon sa isang ruling ng Supreme Court, is... If a law was declared unconstitutional, and I quote, the effects of the unconstitutional law prior to its declaration of nullity may be left undisturbed as a matter of equity and fair play. End of quote. To simplify it or to make it hugot para mas maintindihan, kapag ang isang tao nagkamali, wag nyo na siyang sisingilin sa pagkakamali niya in the past. Parang yung pagtama niya ng mali niya should just be applied in the days to come, in the future. So parang wag niyo na siyang singilin sa mga hindi niya nagawa dati as a matter of equity and fair play. So parang sabi ng Supreme Court, move on na tayo. So by 2022, you're gonna, LGUs would start getting a new and bigger cut of IRA. And I think that's good news for LGUs and the... Uh, For advocates of local governance, we've always felt like LGUs deserve more and LGUs deserve to get more money, lalo na yung mga regions that have their own resources. Na sila yung maraming resources, sila yung mahirap kasi napupunta sa national government yung kita ng, ng, ng region nila or something like that. So those are the three decisions today from the Anbank. And actually, I have to stop talking because sinihintay na ako sa baba. Just want to tell the anecdote of, usually, pag aakit kami ng Baguio to cover the summer Anbank session, uwi din kami agad because the reality of Padre Faura is waiting for us. Pero after three years, the Supreme Court decided to hold the media training. And so we're gonna stay for two more nights. So tonight is gonna be the fellowship night for media. And then tomorrow is gonna be the media training just to refresh and reporting about the law or decisions of the court. Really hard, lalo na for non-lawyers like us. So yeah, we need all the help that we can get. And thank you for listening thus far. I hope you enjoyed learning about new decisions of the court as much as I enjoyed reporting it. Our intention is to make you like or to make the Supreme Court more interesting to you because it's not all boring. Sometimes it's fascinating and we hope that you as listeners would be able to feel that fascination also. So thank you for listening. Thank you.